Hey guys, Peter here to tell you about the latest from Threshold Dividing Lines out November 18th on Nuclear Blast. The album has 10 tracks, 65 minutes in length, and this is the band's 12 full length studio record. They are a progressive metal band from the UK. The design of this album has some interesting characteristics. The first thing that I noticed is that this album doesn't really give you a sense of a path or even a sense of a journey. It has interesting songs, but songs that don't necessarily propel you forward and allow you to take learning experiences as you're going along. There's still a sense of growth as far as how the songs evolve and what they offer, but that growth is separated from any sort of journey that the record could put forward. There's also two interesting tracks in terms of what they give and in terms of their own individual design. And I'm talking about the domino effect and the fence condition. One comes in the middle of the album, the other one comes at the end. They both finish their sides. If you look at this album as a vinyl, you have side A and you have side B, and both songs become the ending of those specific cycles. Now these two songs, because of their characteristics, because of their length, because of their sound, and the atmosphere that they create, they couldn't be anywhere else on the record. I mean, you could alternate them with one another, and I don't think the balance of the album would have been affected, but you can't put them anywhere else. You need to create a sense of balance and a sense of uniformity across the entire album. The album has to make sense from a design point of view and in terms of what that sound gives to the design. These two songs are where they need to be. They make the record feel a little bit more complete. They definitely make the record feel better from an overall perspective and in terms of how you're going to process it if you're going from the first all the way to the last song. I enjoyed this design and I enjoy where they place these songs. What I didn't enjoy about this design is that I wanted the songs to feel like they're taking me somewhere, to, uh, to feel like there is a point to it. And the album at times loses itself within itself and it doesn't give away what is the overall image that it's trying to create with each and every single track. It's too much about the individuality of the songs, not as much about the collective. As far as the sound is concerned, you have to talk about rock. This is a rock album at its core. Sure, it's heavier than a rock album, but the rock essence of the soundscape, of the, the overall production, of how these songs are put together, what is the starting point? What, what is the fuel that it's leading this fire to burn and burn with every single track? It's rock and roll at its core. This is a very rock driven album that doesn't depend just on guitars, but it uses the guitars quite well to drive that message home. Like I said, surely there are uh, elements of heaviness throughout the entire record. Some songs have a lot of thickness to them. This is an album that sound-wise doesn't follow patterns. You don't see patterns emerging in the sound, in the sound experience that each and every single song offers. The patterns exist, but they exist on the design and how the songs are put within that design but not in the sound that they give. The sound on this record is very rich, and they use two elements to create that sense of richness, to create texture, and to really give substance to what you're gonna get from the entire album, and that is the guitars and the keyboards. I honestly felt like the album used them both differently and yet similar in order to create this unique sound experience, song in and song out, by using the exact same ingredients just changing the recipe. Now the keyboards on this album are phenomenal. I enjoy them tremendously because they impacted the songs, they drove the songs, in a lot of cases they also impacted the atmosphere of the tracks, but they didn't overburden the listener with too many details that were not wanted. They always added life to how the tracks came across, either by being a little bit under the surface with, with the performance, with the sound, with the atmosphere or going over the top, controlling the dynamics of the track, infusing solos, infusing more melody, making the songs a little bit larger. This life that the keyboards have is extremely important on the overall life that the sound is going to have. And you're gonna see the exact same thing out of the guitars. The guitars have that same sort of movement, those same sort of expectations when it comes to weaving in and out of tracks giving them a lot more thickness in some songs, creating heaviness, and then taking it all down 
including some acoustic elements in order for you to feel a little bit more stripped down, a little bit more melancholic, a little bit more organic, if you will. The only difference between the two elements is that the keyboards went all the way to 11. They didn't held back the keyboard sound on this album. They didn't held back the keyboard execution of this album. They allow the keyboards to roam freely throughout the entire sound experience of the record. The guitars felt a little bit more controlled at times. They could have gone into a more technical, even progressive territory, pushing that sound to the extremes. And I felt like they depended too heavily on the keyboards to do that and not giving necessary enough room for the guitars to play the exact same role in the exact same style with the exact same execution. This takes a little bit away from the album, it takes a little bit of the steam off the record and at times it thins out the experience, not the sound, but the experience. The drums were consistent from start to finish and they allow the, the overall experience of this record, the overall sound experience of this record to always have great substance and to always be very grounded. This is an album that from a drums perspective doesn't go over the top, it's not in your face. You're not gonna write letters home about how the drums sound, but the importance that they have in terms of balancing out the tracks and always giving you a sense of commonality between them is there and it's something that allows then the other two elements to be a lot more diverse and change the DNA and fingerprint of every single song while still feeling like everything really belongs together. The vocals are definitely one of the highlights of the album. Incredible vocal performance. Very organic, very natural, very loose, very free. And when you have a performance like that, I honestly feel like you get more out of the lyrical content. The lyrical content on this record is very interesting. This is an album that really signifies the times that we're living in. If you're listening to this record, it's impossible not to see the world around you. Now, you can agree with the lyrics, you can disagree with the lyrics, but it all comes down to perception and the perception of the person who's seen the world through their own eyes. That, was, that is what the lyrics on this album are all about. But for you to really feel those lyrics and for you to at least feel somewhat connected to them, the performance has to match that intensity has to match that warmth and I felt like on this album it really did it didn't matter what song we're talking about the vocals always had the right delivery the right tonality pushing itself creating a lot of ebbs and flows within the tracks where sometimes musically there are none songs might be slightly linear but the vocals are always infusing energy making the songs feel a lot more lively than what they actually are this allows the overall record to have power at least in one single element, but not allowing that element to be the only element that has power. But it, this is definitely an album that allows the vocals to take center stage and allows the vocals to come into the forefront and fight with those keyboards for uh, domination of what the sound and what the overall experience is gonna be all about. I would have liked to see this album have a little bit more of a path, a little bit more of a journey, not just having snapshots of where you are in time and then leaving room for the listener to kind of connect the dots. The, knots, the dots should have been connected for the listener. It would have made the album a lot more fluid, would have made the album a lot more dynamic. And when you're looking at a record that's 65 minutes in length, you need to give the album as much movement, as much fluidity as possible for the playability of the album to stay very high. And this album loses a little bit of that because it's a record that requires time from the listener. You have to listen to it multiple times before you can really get into it. It's not a record that offers you everything that it has at first glance. As far as favorite songs are concerned, I wanna start off with Let It Burn. Great intro, allowing a more methodic and yet the dynamic experience musically to happen. But using the vocals, the vocals consistently on this track uh, is what gives this song its DNA. The backing vocals, with harsh vocals, uh, there's just so much vocally that this track offers that allows it to stand out. Because first of all, the overall vocal performance is very strong, very dynamic, great tonality, great range. But then when you start using layers and you add some harsh vocals to those layers, you start to expand the footprint of what the vocals can do and you're making the overall vocal performance even more dynamic, giving even more energy. And you're gonna see that in the chorus, which allows then the track overall to become memorable because it has a very hooky chorus. The guitar solo with the keyboards 
behind it and then acoustic guitars behind I mean the layers surrounding the guitar solo on this track are phenomenal because here you are you're using the two main elements of movement that the album has keyboards and guitars and you have a solo then you add acoustic guitars you add keyboards in it you just have everything there across all the different parameters that you're going to experience throughout the entire record in one single portion of a song this makes the track come to life this gives a lot of energy to the overall sound and it gives the right uh, experience to how you want a track like Let It Burn come across. One of the best design executed songs on this album. Next we have Lost Along The Way. The keyboards on this track sound great. This song has a little bit of a vintage old school vibe to it in terms of how it comes across. It just feels dated without necessarily being an old song. Uh, it just has that aroma to it. It just has those those spider webs if you will in terms of how you perceive it and how it feels the, the vocals always find their way to the lead they always find their way to the forefront and this allows the guitars to roam a little bit better with the keyboards behind in order to create some substance with the drums as well this allows you to have a backdrop of sound and then movement in the forefront with the vocals taking that center stage the track all around has a little bit of a dark and somber atmosphere to it, at the same time sounding very futuristic. You get that futuristic sound more from the keyboards, but also how the guitars interact with that keyboard sound. This makes you feel like there are roles that are changing throughout the entire track, and this allows also for those elements that are taking those lead uh, moments within the song to change on who's leading. Is it the keyboards, is it the guitars, or, or the vocals? Like everything is taking a turn, but the vocals more often than not are the ones getting caught in that lead moment. But the other two also have some moments where they take a little bit more of a center stage. Really interesting track because of the dynamics that it offers, not necessarily the overall sound that it gives. Last but not least, Run, heavy guitar sound. Uh, heavy in terms of the thickness, not necessarily uh, a death metal song it's not but it's a heavy guitar sounding song perhaps a track that depends a lot more on the guitars for the sound experience than it does on the keyboards the keyboards still play a role and the role is more of soften that heaviness taking a little bit of the load off and thinning out the sound they never do it completely the keyboards on this track never really take away that thickness that heaviness that the guitars put forward the chorus is magnificent vocally very warm very heartfelt this is a very heartfelt sounding track musically and vocally it gives you that experience that allows you to better connect with the lyrical content and how everything is coming together the guitars are a little bit more driven in the verses this also helps that thicker sound push itself forward the melodic and, and the melodic nature of the vocals and sound in the chorus creates the ebbs and flows that you need to have within a song like this in order to make it more dynamic but the overall incredible vocal performance it's something that that allows itself to really stand out because it has that heaviness of the guitars behind it push it into the forefront really distancing it you can see the different layers but you can also see the gaps that exist between them and it's really important to have those gaps if you want to have thickness of sound thickness of guitars but still allow the vocals to be miles ahead of everything else only with a gap in between, only by distancing those two worlds, you can really achieve that, and this song definitely does it. This is it, Threshold with Dividing Lines, out November 18th on Nuclear Blast. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles. Use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.